Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to deep dive into the shareholders equity section of the classified balance sheet. Now, one thing to keep in mind, which is actually written at the bottom of the slide, but I'm going to say it first, is that the shareholders equity section is not actually impacted by the fact that you are classifying your balance sheet as opposed to the simple unclassified balance sheet. There are no subcategories for the shareholders equity section. So the shareholders equity section of the balance sheet represents the net value of the company. Remember, A equals L plus SE, assets equals liability plus shareholders, uh, plus shareholders equity, or if you rewrite this, SE equals A minus L, right? The shareholders equity represents what the company owns minus what the company owes to others or the net value of the company. Okay. Common items in the shareholders equity section will be your preferred common and treasury stock. Three types of stock. This is the stockholders equity section. They're all on display there. Any additional paid in capital that, uh, that, that your stock raises on the open market. Stocks may or may not have an inherent price sticker on them, essentially speaking. Don't worry about understanding all this level of detail now. I'll have other videos where I go into deep dives on stock and accounting for stock and valuing stock, but stocks may or may not have this inherent value. And to the extent that because of market supply and market demand, the company receives more money than that inherent value for the stock, they're going to record additional paid in capital. Nonetheless, you are simply recording the total value received from your stock, right? Um, inside your shareholders equity section, you're also going to have retained earnings. So all of the earnings of the company belong to the company's owners. Retained earnings is just the accumulation of all those earnings over time. So every year you have an income statement, net income, which is the earnings of the company. Assuming the company does not give it back to the shareholders and holds on to it to reinvest, this is where they're going to display it as part of retained earnings in the shareholders equity section. This is saying, hey, these earnings belong to you, belong to you, the shareholder, but we're holding on to them as a company because we want to reinvest in the company. And then not something that introductory students are necessarily expected to know, but accumulated other comprehensive income, also known as AOCI, also shows up in the shareholders equity section. This is an account that's used for various um, changes in, in, in valuation of your assets that don't necessarily get recognized in the income statement. Um, due to various rules. So um, you might have, say, an investment. This is just an example. You might have an investment that um, is either worth less or more than you originally paid for it, which you think would result in revenue or expense on the income statement. Um, but instead, because of various accounting rules, sometimes you may not be allowed to put it on the income statement yet, not until you get rid of it. And therefore, um, you've got to have a place to kind of show investors that change in value. And that's what the AOCI is used for. Um, as an example, this comes from Bed Bath & Beyond, shareholders equity section of their classified balance sheet. Notice they list their preferred stock, they list their common stock, they list their additional paid in capital, they list their retained earnings, they show the treasury stock of the company, they show the AOCI, and then they subtotal that all together for total shareholders equity. And then of course, in proper balance sheet format, they end their balance sheet with a total of L plus SE in order to compare that to total assets. Um, as far as order for your um, shareholders equity accounts, you are typically going to list your stocks first with preferred first and then common, just as you see here. You are typically going to list your additional paid in capital second. You are typically going to list your retained earnings after that. And treasury stock typically goes um, at the very end um, because it is actually a subtraction from shareholders equity. It's what we call a contra equity account. Um, and again, that's beyond the scope of this video. I'll have other videos where I talk about this in detail and you'll get a better understanding for treasury stock there. But for now, just know that this is the general order. If there is any accumulated other comprehensive income, um, that will also go at the end along with the treasury stock. All right. So that's it for the shareholders equity section. If you already understood shareholders equity from the unclassified balance sheet, then there's no problem in understanding it for the classified balance sheet because it doesn't really change. There are no classifications within shareholders equity. Hope you learned something from this and I hope you join me for the next video.